The following podcast is a little fiery but mostly peaceful. If you're an automaton, turn away now and shelter in place. If you're a Catholic ready to renew your prescriptions of red pills and white pills, stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Catholics Aren't Zombies. I'm your host, Chris Munir. Thank you for joining me once again. Men and women, boys and girls, children of all ages, I'm so delighted to have you. Today we're going to talk about getting up early. Wake your butt up early in the morning. Wake up. Quit playing around. And I'm not even just talking about hitting that snooze button or, you know, the slow, dinky, morning routine that people have sometimes i'm talking about just flat out get up early stop playing around stop pretending you're a nocturnal creature yep i think i might lecture a little bit on this one it's not a topic that lends itself to a whole bunch of data analysis or complex psychology it's just something that's real simple good old-fashioned you either got it or you don't you do it or you don't and that's get up early Now, we do have to, of course, operationally define what I mean by waking up early. Because some people's idea of wake up early is 8.45. It's like, nah, 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 we ain't doing that. 8.40 stinking 5. Give me a break. Now, on the one hand, it's pretty disgraceful if you sleep all the way till 10 or 11. And a lot of people do that, calling that their day that they're going to sleep in. Oh, boy. And some people do that every day. Let's get real about this, though. Wake up early, seize the day, get your butt moving, and this is no later than 7 a.m. And really, it should be no later than 6. I'm thinking more like 5 or even 4. I've been doing 5 o'clock lately, and it is a really big boon on your life. It is amazing how much better you'll feel if you get up early, you grab the bull by the horns. I don't even care what you do. Just get stuff done. And as I've said before, the more terrific accomplishments that you can get under your belt before noon, you will feel so much better. And a lot of your anxieties in life will just kind of wash right on down, just like, just like you know, water down a, down a duck's back or something. I'm going to start this with a particularly Catholic approach to things. Let's talk about prayer, and let's talk about consecrated religious folks for a second. This is particularly germane to them. I believe, I mean, there's lots of different religious orders out there, but I think most of the the really good ones, they make their uh, brothers and sisters and nuns and monks, they make them get up early. Carmelites, I think they get up about four. Four, five, you know, you're getting up, you're you're doing matins, you're doing, uh, you know, you're getting those really big... uh, difficult and, and beautiful canonical hours prayers you know the liturgy of the hours or the old breviary where it can be something that takes an hour maybe even an hour and a half but it's so spiritually enriching to wake up early before the crack of dawn before the cock is crowed and consecrate your day to god with some really deep prayer and i think uh, this is something that could really help a lot of catholics even those who are actually just you know lay folks that got to get up and work We're a lot weirder than we used to be. A lot of people do night shift. They do the graveyard shift. It's not your traditional 8 to 5 anymore. I don't think that was really what humans were meant to do. But even if, let's say, you do a job that requires you to be there at 7 o'clock, well, okay, you wake up at 5, especially if you wake up at 4, and you hit the ground running, you got plenty of time to get some prayer in. You get up before the children, because children, they always sleep later. They need, you know, 10 or 12 hours of sleep, of course. You know, even more than that if we're real little. If you get up early, especially you're the man of the house, that's your opportunity to get up and really pray. And when you're done with that, if you still have time, you could even go, you know, maybe make a holy hour, maybe get your workout in. Cardio in particular, I'm not a big cardio guy, but getting up early and doing the cardio before you go to work, that's your best time. You don't want to wait till like 7 o'clock in the evening to do that. You know, you're more likely to have a heart attack after having all the stress of the day and then going and doing your workout in the evening. I think working out works better in the morning too probably. None of this is possible if you're somebody who has to be at work at 7 and you wake up at you know, 6.15 and you know, just barely get there. It doesn't give you any time. But seriously, folks, you know, again, speaking broadly, wake your butt up early. 
People don't do this anymore. I think in the old days you kind of had to, especially in agricultural societies. You had to wake up, crack a dawn. That was just the reality of it. And since we don't have that as much anymore, we've gotten a little soggy. We don't, you know, we don't have those disciplines any longer. So what do people do? Yeah, they sleep in till 10. They're college students. They got a class at 9, and they wake their butt up at 8.45 and drag themselves there. This is pathetic. This is not what we're meant to do. There's even some studies out there. I think I'm going to put a link in the show notes, uh, some YouTube video or two, where, I mean, honestly, we really were meant to be asleep between about 10 p.m. and 4, maybe a little bit longer than that. But this stupid idea of somehow staying up till 2 or 3 in the morning, because that's where this comes from. Obviously, when it comes to sleep and your life patterns, what comes around ultimately does go around. So there's this ridiculous habit we've developed in recent decades, however long it's been, I'm not even really sure, of goofing around till 2 or 3 in the morning. You know, these wee hours where almost nobody gets anything accomplished, nobody does anything meaningful, probably playing around with porn or you know, you know, doing some kind of internet chat or playing around on Reddit or playing around on 4chan or whatever these stupid mindless media things are. When biologically, we were meant to sleep. I'll grant, maybe there's 2% of people out there who can actually get something really accomplished and then they're actually better after midnight. I've heard of a very, very select minority of folks who at least claim they can do it. Now, whether they can or not, I, God only knows. But that's a tiny, tiny fraction. That's about as many people that might actually, that, that, that's about the same fraction of people that might actually be gay. I mean, 2% the most. Everybody else is pretending. It's also kind of like this whole uh, introversion thing. Everybody's an introvert. Everybody's scared to go out and talk to people. Everybody's got the social anxiety and the social anxiety dis- disorders. There's some kind of disorder, and that's an excuse to go hide in the corner. Yeah, probably not. It's probably bogus. Now, you're never going to get the, you know, the scientific, uh, psychological, academic establishment to ever contradict that in any meaningful way. So don't count on that being verified scientifically anytime soon. But that's bullcrap. This idea that there's this many night owls out there is bullcrap. I would suggest we take a long look in the mirror and also remind ourselves of what the reality really is. Like I said, I'm going to put it in the show notes. There was an interesting video I saw where they were making the claim that we were really not meant to see, our bodies were not meant to see light between 10 and 4 a.m., 10 p.m., 4 a.m., we're supposed to shut down and when we go to sleep literally try to get your darkest blackest room possible where the eye coverings you know the you know, that can be something that helps too but whatever you do you know you're just you're not you're not vampires we're not like i always got to tell you we're not zombies catholics aren't zombies catholics aren't vampires either another thing that i think this kind of stems from is also this party hedonistic culture we have You know, this, you know, start your drinking at 7.30 in the evening and then just keep going and going and going all the way till, you know, 2 or something in the morning. Meanwhile, if you really did keep drinking that dang long, you probably downed at least 10 of them, which, you know, by anybody's estimate is pretty excessive. Yeah, something you got to go to confession for eventually or hopefully soon. (laughs) And this is what we, our culture has become, and it's led us to have this really haphazard, sloppy sleep schedule. If you're going to do it once or twice a week on Friday and Saturday, well, you know, you might as well just drop any pretense of being disciplined with your sleep schedule any other day of the week. And the term sleep schedule is very important, and understanding that significance will make a difference in your life, irrespective of when you sleep. If you're one of those that's got to go and you you wake up at a different hour every day of the week, you go to sleep at a different hour all the time, that is one of the worst things people do in in terms of setting themselves up for obesity, all these health problems. It's not a coincidence. Almost every person I know who's got a weight problem, they are absolutely undisciplined as it pertains to going to sleep. They're all over the place. And of course... A little hard to parse that out, to hold it constant, because, you know, the same people might be undisciplined on basically every other variable in life. So, yeah, you got some cross-cutting measures there to analyze. Obesity is a multivariable problem. I shouldn't assume anything otherwise. Via diet, stress, 
lack of sleep, uh, lack of sunlight, all, all sorts of things like that lead to it. But like I said, you know, get your butt up early. I think we are really wasting so much of our life, so much of what God has given to us, this precious gift of time that's on loan to us, and we, just as the stewards in the gospel, are going to be held to strict accountability on how we actually steward the precious resource of time. There's a lot of resources we better be worried about. We better be worried about whether we live beneath our means or not. Not within our means, beneath them. Because we got some scarcity coming. Or we self-inflict ourselves with a scarcity of time because we are sloppy and just don't wake our butts up on time. Now, before I conclude, you know, I definitely got to say something about alarm clocks. I used to try to be as against them as I could because my understanding is it's not the most natural way to wake up in the morning. Beats getting woken up by a loud, annoying rooster or a reveille sort of thing. <laughs> but you weren't meant to be shocked into being awake. If you can do it naturally, you know, hey, your guardian angel wakes you up, right? Some people that works. I think, unfortunately, I may have to include myself in this as well, that we kind of just don't wake up on our own very well. So with that in mind, I, I think I probably would go the alarm clock route. It sucks, and, and sometimes you feel like you're setting yourself up to basically be a child or a slave to the darn thing. It sort of feels that way some days. If you can't really tell when to wake up, you just don't have that intuition, and 5 o'clock and 6.45 all kind of seem the same. So certain times of the year, it's all dark anyway. How the heck can you tell? You might want to just go with the alarm clock. Again, concluding points here. Wake your butt up early. we got to quit playing this game, pretending everybody's a night owl. When you look at the folks out there who are the most disciplined, the business leaders who accomplish the most, the athletes that do the best, the military consecrated religious folks who do the best in, in terms of prayer priests like priests you get up early and you know are you doing your bravery early you know the liturgy of the hours is it's one of those, especially the old one the old latin one it starts off heavy but that early stuff you got to get that and you got to really attack it you attack the hill so to speak otherwise you won't get it done so i i think historically farmers the most industrious people uh, folks who could really uh, get the job done. They could tackle large books because they got up early and read them. They got up early. So thus concludes my preaching. Hope you've enjoyed it. That's the end of the show. Thank you for watching Catholics Aren't Zombies. I want you, yeah you, to check out my wonderful blog, DitchTheStateLoveHolyChurch.com. I share all kinds of cool stuff there all the time. I want you to subscribe to the podcast. And other than that, Dave's Volt, have a good one. Cue the music. <laughs> <laughs>